Then, and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. They did not like what these children were doing and what was going on in the temple, right? And watch. Now, notice they didn't say anything about him talking about the sellers of doves, turning over the tables, doing all this stuff. They didn't say anything about that. What they said was this in verse 16, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? So what they, were, they weren't concerned about what he did in the temple. They were concerned about what these children were singing to him and were crying out to him and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Why? Because they knew the scriptural reference that that was for the Messiah. And they didn't like that. And they're saying, you're, you're responsible for this thing, right? And he says, do you hear what they say? And Jesus saith unto them, yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? What was Jesus doing? He was bringing the scripture that they already knew and telling them they're doing the right thing by saying this. In other words, he's saying, this, is, this was for me. Now watch. So now notice what he said. Have, have you never heard, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise. Now this was a quote from Psalm 8. So turn to Psalm 8. It's a short psalm, nine verses. We're going to start in verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, now, so this, this is the verse Jesus quoted, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength. Now stop right there. Notice when Jesus quoted this verse, he quoted it differently. What did he say? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise. He says here, or psalmist says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordained strength. So Jesus puts ordaining strength equal with perfected praise. Why? Now watch, he says, because of your enemies. Now, this is one of the things that made the Pharisees mad. Why? Because he was saying to them, uh, They've done this because of my enemies, which were who? The scribes and the Pharisees. So he was pointing directly to them, saying, when God said, because of thine enemies, he was talking about you guys. Now imagine how that, how that made them feel. I'm sure that really endeared them to him, right? <laughs> so, and I notice, now, now think about this. <clears throat> what he's saying is, perfected praise, mature praise, proper praise, releases and ordains or sets about and puts in place strength. Why? Against enemies. So when you start to praise, it causes your enemies, it causes a strength to be released against your enemies. Now watch this. And why? He says that you might still stop so that you can stop the enemy and the avenger. Now, think about that. He says, if you learn to praise correctly, you re when you praise correctly, you release strength that stops your enemy and the avenger. So, one, now think about this. One thing, you got an enemy, somebody dislikes you. You don't, you don't have to do anything wrong to have an enemy. You can do things right and have an enemy. You can have an enemy because you do things right. Isn't that right? But now, notice he says, you don't have just the ability to stop the enemy but you can also stop the avenger. Now, the avenger is someone who comes to bring vengeance or to bring recompense, meaning you've done something wrong and they've come to avenge what you've done wrong. So what he's saying is when you learn how to praise correctly, you will stop people that come against you for no reason and you'll stop the things that come against you for a reason. In other words, even the things you've done, you can stop. Even in the areas of sowing and reaping, you can stop those things when you learn how to correctly praise. praise the Lord. Amen? So you can stop the enemy and the avenger. Yeah. Right? Now think about that. So you can stop all of these things that come against you when you learn to perfect praise because praise, mature, correct praise, releases strength. Now, correct praise, now understand, you have to understand the difference between, and I'm trying to hurry here, but it's hard. You know what's hard is teaching... It's hard to teach topically because everything in the Bible is connected. And one thing leads to another. And what people call a bunny trail isn't a bunny trail. 
it's a part of that we don't have time to go into right now, but I do it anyway, right? <laughs> and then we come back and get on the main trail, okay? But now notice this. So he says here, uh, yeah, the, the, that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. So these things that are coming against you, you can stop them. But the difference is, as I was going to say, the difference between this, between praise, praise is one thing, worship is another. Right. See, praise is something that thanks God for what he's done or going to do. So you praise him for what he's done or what he's going to do. Worship is worshiping because of who he is and what he is. So there's a difference. See, when, you're, when we say, well, we're going to worship, well, we, we're going to do some praise and worship. They're not the same thing. There, there are different purposes. Perfected praise stops the enemy. What does that mean? That means when you praise correctly, you're thanking God for what he's going to do in stopping the enemy. I thank you. This is going to stop. I thank you. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Right. I, I praise you that you're, that you're my God, and because of that, nothing formed against me shall prosper. It doesn't say things won't be formed against you. It says weapons will be formed against you, but they won't prosper. Amen. But the problem is people see the weapons formed, and they go, oh, what am I going to do? And they start praising the enemy by telling him what he's going to do. Oh, they're going to take our house. Oh, they're going to take our car. Oh, no, you know, the sickness. I, I'm going to catch something. I'm going to, I'm going to get sick with this. What are you doing? You're praising the enemy and the avenger and telling them what they're going to do, and you're opening that door for them to come in and do it, as opposed to looking at God and saying, I see the enemy. I see him coming, and I thank you that you're not going to let that weapon prosper. I say, though a thousand fall in my left hand and 10,000 in my right, it won't come near my house. Why? Because God lives here, right? Now, and obviously, if we're talking about a house, you can talk about a physical home, but this is your house. Yeah. Paul, said, Paul said, this tabernacle that I now live in, this house that I'm now in, I'm soon going to lay it aside, and if it dissolves, then we're going to have another one in heaven that I'm going to be clothed upon with my new one. But So when we talk about no weapon shall come near my dwelling, well, guess where you dwell? Right here in this body. Yeah. Amen? It ain't where you stay. It's where you dwell. Yes, Amen? Because you might stay in a house, but you dwell in this body. Why? Because you, you say, I stay in that house. But you, if you leave the house, you ain't staying in the house. But this body, you dwell. Why? Because wherever you go, this body goes. So no plague shall come near this house, this dwelling. Amen? Do you get that? We're talking about divine protection here. Why? Because of dominion through Jesus Christ. We have the right to say. See, authority means the right to speak. That's what authority means. That, they, that you have the right to speak and to speak boldly and bluntly, yeah. right? And so you have been given dominion and authority and you can speak into your situation. And whenever you start to say, um, this is the way it's going to be. Now, if you're talking Bible, you see, you've got angels. There are angels in this room right now. Right. Uh, more angels than there are us. Right. Amen. But everybody at least has one. Right. And the Bible says that, the, that these children's angel constantly face the Lord or they always see behold his face and so we know that as a child everybody has an angel there's nothing that ever says your angel leaves just because you get older <laughs> amen so and, and honestly it depends on if you if it's talking about physical or, or mental you know because we're supposed to be like children anyway isn't that right and so we got angels but if you're talking you know if, if you're going to stand here and talk news and well this is what's going to happen this one that angels are standing there going Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Okay. And, and you're calling things which be not as though they were because they hadn't happened yet. And you're talking, to, and then all of a sudden you go, Yeah, that's what the news says. But let me tell you, the Bible says, and the angel goes, What? Go ahead. And he waits. And whenever you start, start saying, Well, the Bible says, No weapon formed against me will prosper. So I don't care about this stuff. The Bible says, I'm going to prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. And that, right, right when you say that, that angel goes, All right. What's attacking you? We got to stop this. We got to stop that. We got to stop that. Nope, you can't. No, no, I can't come near my dwelling. Why? Amen. That's the way it works. Why, why do you say? Well, because the angels are ministering spirits sent to minister for us. And, but angels hearken to the voice of his word. So until you speak his word, angels don't do nothing. But they hearken. Now notice, they don't just hearken to his word. They hearken to the voice of his word. You're that voice. 
And when you start speaking his word, your angels start to move and start making things happen. And then they start think they go out and you start speaking the things of God. And then they go out and find and they'll go talk to somebody for you. They'll go talk to somebody. You say, well, you know what? Well, here's what we need. We need the finances to start a business. All right, here's how much money we need. Here's what we need. But, you know, Lord, we really want to work with somebody that's honorable and want to work with somebody with integrity. So, Lord, we thank you that you prepare and you go before us. And we thank you, Lord, that you can make the right connections for us. And we thank you right now that that our steps are guided by you. So we thank you. We're going to come into contact with the right person. And the angel says, you need to go to this house. You need to go to this business. Walk in there. Go to Walmart. Go to aisle four. And you'll be standing there looking at something. Somebody walk up and be talking. Y'all start talking pretty soon. Two weeks, you're in business together. Why? Because the angel of the Lord directed. Angels were guiding and directing. Does this make sense? This is the way you function with dominion. You speak the word of God. And as a king and a priest, because we're made kings and priests under our God. Is that right? As a king and a priest, where the word of a king is, there is power. And what power? The word of the king, the Bible. You speak his word, angels work on your behalf. Amen. It makes life a lot easier because you don't have to do all the work yourself. Yeah. Amen. And you're always trying. Well, who have I got to meet? Well, I got to try to make an appointment with this person. Yeah, I got to try to. Well, you know, I got to try. No, just relax and, and speak the word of God and watch. And you'll meet people and you'll think, you know, I wasn't even planning on going over there. I wasn't even planning on going to that thing. And I went there and made a great business contact, made a great contact with somebody. And God will work things through you and for you. And then you step back and go, wow, look what he's done. You know, and you didn't even know you were being led by the Spirit, you know, until later when you look back, right? So, 